Messi. Oh, what a goal it is! Hi, I'm Avinesh. Uh, I write for the Star Sports, and you're tuning in to the Bola Bola Show. Hello and welcome to the Bola Bola Show. It's me, Alvin here, and together with me, I've got my two co-hosts, so Bala and Steven. So Bala, how's it going? Hi, Alvin. How are you? Things are good. Uh, I think the situation has improved. Uh, hopefully, things get more better up from this. Time. How about you, Steven? Hello, everyone. And of course, you know, yes, yeah, mentioned Bala. You're correct. Uh, things are getting better. You know, so let's hope. Things, let's hope we are moving in the right track. You know, because. The Malaysian Football League season is just about to start. And of course, you know, yeah, so much of anticipation of what 20 year 2021 is going to bring for us. But we thought for this episode, the best person to talk about what's going on in the Malaysian Football League this year is none other than Avinish, all, the, all from Star, Star Sport, I believe. Star newspaper, sorry, to explain to us and uh, share with us his insight on the upcoming season. Hello, Avinish. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? Yes, sir. Uh, fine, fine. <laughs> yeah, glad to have yeah. you on board, Avinish. Welcome. Yes, yes. Thank you. Welcome. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, maybe you uh, care to uh, share a little bit about your background to our listeners? Uh, okay. Uh, I write for the Star Sports. So, my main beats are football, hockey, basketball, shooting, gymnastics, and yada, yada, yada. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been writing sports for the last two years, you know, not two years, actually, almost three years now. Mm-hmm. But uh, I first started off as a news writer. So I joined the star in 2012, right after my graduation. Mm-hmm. And I was doing news first, but my first passion was Hess and all of and will always be sports. Mm-hmm. So at that point of time, I didn't get the gig. So I thought, you know what, whatever that is given to me, I'll just do it. Uh, so I was a news writer for five years and then after that I quit my job to do my master's and also uh, doubled into uh, doubled in uh, public relations and also uh, trade and finance. And then after that, in 2019, I got the offer to join Star Sports. I mean, I saw the prospectus and I immediately said, you know what, this is my time, I should apply for it. And I applied for it and I got it. And uh, yeah, I'm here now. Uh, doing lots of uh, sports stories, especially football, which is, uh, I think, it's not only my passion. Is a lot of people here in Malaysia love football, mm-hmm. uh, and also I decided to be in the beat because I follow Malaysian football since I was quite young, since I was seven actually. Mm-hmm. So uh, at the point of time, you know, I I followed Pera quite fervently, and uh, and then only I started following the EPLs, the Serias, and the La Ligas, and so on. So my first love will always be uh, Malaysian football and then the rest. So now I'm glad that I'm able to write about our game here. You know, it has its ups and downs, but uh, it's been uh, it's been a fulfilling journey, I would say, so far. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this considered like a dream job la, for you, huh? Yeah, it's uh, the dream. <laughs> yes, I, I, I can say that actually. Yes, it's, it's my dream job. La. Because when I was young, I used to read Star Sports a lot. Mm-hmm. So when I got the offer and you know I got into the team, it was like you know, it's it was a surreal experience, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now for me, it's like uh, it's not just a passion; it's also a job because at the end of the day, you need to inform people and you need to be honest. Mm-hmm. So it, I see it that way, la. <laughs> Okay, okay, very interesting. And of course, you know, uh, Malaysian football is going through an interesting period right now with the mm-hmm. privatization process. So. Mm-hmm. Of course, despite of undergoing the transformation from football association to football club, you okay. know we still hear many issues on, regarding team uh, on the team management side, unpaid salaries, players with no insurance, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But right. overall, how confident are you with this privatization privatization process? To be frank with you, I think this process is going to take a while to gel with every team in the country mm-hmm. because uh, a lot of teams are now switched from FA. I mean, the FAs have formed the FCs already, but yet you still have people who are in the FA in the FCs. And when you bring that mindset into FCs, things might not might not be able to move on as quickly as we, as we want it to be. Mm. So for me, the privatization, privatization process is a step forward but we need to make sure there is uh, progressive growth to it 
so at the moment we can see a lot of issues actually i want to share something to you all in in uh, in asia yep all the clubs in the asian leagues they've got afc license they are all called clubs oh okay, only okay. in malaysia only in malaysia mm-hmm. this was said by dr winsor paul uh, afc mm-hmm. sagen okay only in malaysia we do not have fcs we have uh, teams that are from the associations playing in leagues so that is why you see a lot of clubs struggling to get afc license even this year so i think only seven or six clubs applied for afc license the rest they applied for nation license mm. so in terms of privatization and moving the the brand of nation football is it's not uh, is not as quickly as it want it to be la you know because we still have uh, teams that are reliant on state government money and then we still have teams that are still reliant on the influence of politicians you know Mm-hmm. so for me at the end of the day if that bug does not stop privatization will be a slow process but mm-hmm. i would say what fm and mfl has done at the moment they have taken the first step but that first step must not be a first step it must be a continuous step towards achieving the full uh, idea of private privatization so we were you actually see a lot of uh, stories and scandals happening this season like for example uh, we know Blacker has got wage issues, and then uh, Penang. You know, recently they signed the contract with the players, and then all of a sudden, because they couldn't get the budget that they want, they tried to renegotiate the salaries and the contract. So all these kind of situations need to be all the. I mean, these kind of situations need to be avoided. Ah, Pera, for example, my state team. You know, the previous management say they are doing this, they are doing that, but then when they transition to the new management, the new management now is struggling to get money because they see the money did not come from the previous management. So these are the kind of things that we don't want to hear, mm-hmm. and it is happening in many many clubs. It's it's a sad thing to see, lah. Mm. Yep. Mm. Mm. Okay, and uh, so I mean, regarding this privatization process, right? You know, apart from JDT, mm. uh, which team impressed you the most this off season? Off season, I would say Tengano. Tengano has been brilliant with their way they have signed their players, mm-hmm. and uh, they are working on a budget. That is very good. I've been t- whenever people ask me about you know football, they said you know GDT has the money. I said yes, they have the money. They can they can spend whatever they want because they have the money. But you have to be realistic with what you have. So when you have a budget, follow that budget. So I think Tengano is doing that very well. you know they have got their own it's not their i mean it's a, it's a state complex but now that state complex has been given to the team so they have their own training center and they are not spending lavishly you know to build a training center mm. they are doing it simple the padang is beautiful you know the field is beautiful so we can see the nafuzi is trying to bring in the young players that he wants so it's a project that i i am very uh, keen to see growing in the future and slango slango If you ask me, marketing-wise, they have been brilliant. I think they have been really good with the way they have marketed their jerseys, with the way they have brought community into the team, which I think is very essential in football. You know, they are able to generate the con. I mean, uh, topics of conversation within the people. That, like, for example, yesterday's jersey release. I, for me, that is the best jersey of of for the season last, and people are talking about it. and people are still talking about it so that is what you want you know yeah and, we, ordered, uh, in, we ordered the jersey we are still waiting for it la <laughs> bro i couldn't even order it. i i got there again but i decided uh. to get the jersey because it's beautiful that's all yeah. but i couldn't get it but it's okay maybe the next round i'll get it la yeah. uh, so in that sense and football also because they have, they they want to follow the german style mm-hmm. so they have got two two guys which is kasten neitel and michael fachten beiner yeah. and they have told them you do the you do the footballing part You know, whoever you want to get, you get, but it must be according to the budget. So that is why they have signed players like Oliver Bar, Michael Conrad, Tim Huber, because these players were able to say yes to the budget that uh, Slango wants to give. So if teams follow that and they have a steady financial flow, that is very good. These two teams, I am really looking forward to next season, lah, in terms of development and all. Hmm. Okay. Mm. Overall, we do see some improvement from Nation Football League, but mm. uh, on the uh, positive, going on the uh, skeptic side, would you agree that this was a knock-on effect from JDT has been doing over the last few years, whereby they kicked it off and then now other teams are now doing a lot of catch-ups? Uh, one, yeah, in a way, yes, JDT 
has played a role in making sure that these clubs are able to promote themselves well and changing the structure of their management and so on. But at the same time, I would say AFC has also played a role. FAM also played a role. FAM has been very serious about privatization. Since Tuvas Ramalingam took over, he was adamant on this approach. He wanted clubs to be privatized. That is one thing he always envisaged. And he's, he's, hopefully, he's able to push that agenda, which we all want at the end of the day. Uh, JDT, people, people see JDT as the, the benchmark. But for me right now, instead of seeing them as a benchmark or emulating them, I think it's time that we look at our own selves first. You know, what we can do with the resources that we have. That is very, very important. So within the resources, you develop yourself. You do your own ideas. You come up with your own ways of, you know, developing the team. If you have to, you know, use young players to, you know, start off from scratch, just do it. You know, that's the kind of thing we want. Uh, you know, the knockoff e- effect from JDT has been good. But it's now time for all the teams in the league to have their own way of doing things, to have their way, their, their own way of development. And I truly and hopefully wish that each of these teams will have minds that are truly uh, sports management savvy. You know, I because we still have teams with managers who come from political backgrounds this season. This season. So that has to stop. But... You know, at the end of the day, Malaysian football has been so accustomed to having these political people within these teams. It is something that is going to take a very long time to to even shake it off. So, I don't know when that would happen. But if that happens, you know what? We will actually see wholesome changes to Malaysian football. We will actually see, you know, football being... Uh, something that is uh, more accustomed to the people. It means people are able to associate themselves with them. Now, people always think that, you know, football, we must have political power to, you know, speed things up. I think that perception has to be changed. And uh, as a reporter, you know, I try my best to tell people, bukan macam tu, we, kita tak boleh buat macam tu. Kita kena buat macam ni, baru akan move on. But I'm not in a position where I can influence teams. So I just do that via my writing lah. Yeah, and uh, and and you know, uh, of course, you know, finance has always been uh, one of the major issues here when it comes to Malaysian football and teams. You know, always you hear teams struggling financially and all that. So you know, what what do you think about you know? Will it be a feasible idea for some of these clubs, you know, to play like a feeder role to other teams in Asia? Why not? That is what we want at the end of the day. Because truth mm-hmm. be told, our league is nowhere near some of the Asian leagues. If we can fit our players there, it's good. At the end of the day, the national team would be able to will be stronger, and at the same time, these boys when they come back to Malaysia and play for our clubs, they are able to you know impart their knowledge to these teams. See, right now we uh, these uh, I don't know if players would agree with me or not lah. I feel like players are also part of this whole financial hula bali that is happening within Malaysian football. So I give you an example lah. Okay, mm, yeah. when you discuss a contract with a team, you know always it's it's always how high you can go and so on and how low you can you know uh, i mean how high you can go so teams will always say yes can can no problem no problem but players don't see their epf rights players don't see the need to pay tax players don't see the need for insurance so this kind of education needs to be inculcated in players these days and i'm glad that pfam is doing that but at the same time there is also a sense of responsibility like a team is not paying your salaries for a month go and report to fam go and report to fifa Okay, fine. If FAM says tapo bagi chance to the clubs, it's okay. You go straight to FIFA. Foreign players who come and play in Malaysia, they do that uh, immediately. After a month, if they don't get their salary, they will say, I want to go to FIFA. And that is something that our local boys should do. Our local boys, they have this fear where, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if I report this to FIFA, I will not get a playing opportunity elsewhere. That Actually, has to stop. Actually, Sorry. interesting uh, interesting that you bring this up because I'm uh-huh. just wondering, okay, when these clubs grow, uh, go private and all that, would that, for example, cases like this, would mm. they then be subject to the labor law of this country and all that? Can that be tied up or it's going to be something very different? Like, for example, somebody doesn't get their salary and all this. Right. right? Uh, usually for football, if mm. they do not get their salary, they go straight to FAM. That's how it works. Lah. Mm. They can also go to the labor court. Actually, if they want to, they can. But the best avenue is to go through FAM and FIFA because they know the football contracts, clauses and everything. They mm-hmm. have people who are expertise in sports contracts and all yeah. that. 
So that is why players go to FIFA and FAM. Like, like foreign players, I, the ones I've spoken to, a lot of them said, bro, I'm not getting my salary. I'm going to go to FIFA. I said, go ahead, go. But, and they said, and usually they'll tell me off record. But if they win the case, they'll come and tell me I won the case. You know, those kind of things. I'll give you an example. Uh, yeah. Not Narupan from Laka. Uh, this was, I think, last season. Uh, Pera actually signed a South Korean centre-back uh, before signing. I mean, and then, I mean, they signed a South Korean centre-back. So, when he came for the medical, he failed the medical. But our friend already signed the contract. Okay? So, Pera said, I will not pay off your contract. Okay? I will not pay your contract. So, this player said, I've already signed the contract. Why are they saying this? So, what he did was he went to FIFA. He won the case and he got his money. Mm. So, these are the kind of things where that is why we need people who are sports management savvy. When you have politicians leading teams, uh, they don't understand the, 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 what is that, the basis of giving a contract or understanding a player or seeing the analytics behind any player. Like that player that they, they wanted to sign the South Korean, his injury record was bad. I the agent to when when the agent told me he's going to sign for Pera, I I researched about this player. Mm. I spoke to a few South Korean reporters, and they told me why did the club sign this player? He did not even play in the K League one. He only played in the university level. How can they sign him? You know the kind of thing. Yeah. So if I can think of all this, why can't the people within Papa is able to think of all that? Can mm. so this is this is still happening in Malaysian football. Like, I give you an example, Mlaka. They were supposed to sign Ivan Landrich. They thought he would come in for free, but they didn't know he was still contracted with Zeljas Nika. Mm-hmm. So, they tried to ask him to terminate his contract, but which European club would want to do that? They don't want to simply terminate the contract. They want to get money from the player. So, these are the kind of things clubs really need to know now. This is a professional era. You know, you have this, you, you have this kind of issues happening and you have to be ready for it. For me, right now, I would say that our understanding of, you know, signing a player and all that is still a bit flawed. That's my opinion at the moment. La. But mm-hmm. I hope in the future they would understand, you know, okay, now this has happened, we will learn from this. So, that is something that clubs really need to know. La. Like, Slango knows what they're doing. JDT, we don't need to tell. La. You know, they know how they yeah. know they're scouting, they know how to sign the players and all that. And then, uh, Tungano, you know, they've got a good system now. They have brought in youngsters and they are not you know, they are signing in these youngsters, giving them a project. So, in these two years, I want to see our progress. Instead of saying, oh, you join my team, you have to immediately perform. No. It shouldn't be that way. So, when you have when you have clubs who are planning like this, our football will eventually move forward. We need we need this kind of mindset stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and all this uh, money that is being used to pay off to compensate all these players, I think these monies can be put to good use for their team, right? All right, very true, bro. Very true. I agree with you because you see, when you pay those fines and all that, uh, it's redundant. We, you're supposed to avoid all that. It's like buta buta. You're giving away money. You know that money you can use for development. That money you can, you know, use for infrastructure. So this cycle has to stop. But I don't know when this cycle will stop. You know, it's very frustrating whenever I read this kind of news and all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I've been telling people, you know, it's just a change of name from FA to FC, but the same people, the same uh, characters are still behind the team. So how much things can change? And I All think right. another, and I think another mm-hmm. thing about a part of privatization is in terms of teams having top class facilities. You mentioned about Trangano, how much they've improved on that aspect. But yet we still have teams who are, you know, playing in poorly maintained stadiums, you know, despite all mm-hmm. having, having huge backing from state government. I mean, why is this? You have to understand, yeah, uh, those Majlis Bandarayas, okay, they do not know what high-level sport is all about, what kind of grass we want, how the stadium should be, how the dressing room should be. Mm -hmm. So these people, they do not have that understanding yet. So for us to see changes happening, you know, we need teams to have their own stadiums. But in Malaysia, it is a bit tough because some teams, they still need the help of the councils to have the stadiums. And even when teams teams tell the council that, you know, we need this, we need that. They need money. They need money. But teams don't want to give the money because at the end of the day, the stadium is not theirs. Why should I give the money to them to do this kind of work? We are just renting the... We are renting and yet we still have to pay for these changes, which for them, they feel is not right. Mm -hmm. So that is why you see, you you still have stadiums that are poorly done. And then, uh, you know, we still have teams moaning about 
pitches that is very bad you know like tengano they 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 were very smart like the state go- what i like about tengano is the state government they always support sports if you see a lot of their athletes they are representing the country they are doing quite well so that in that sense tengano is very lucky to have a state government that always backs sports so that is why you see such a beautiful pitch set with the help of mfl and i was also told jdp also have them out a little so mm-hmm. that is that is one example and in slangos case it's tough you know because at the end of the day they still need to rely on the government so i mean state government so you see like shalam stadium it's bad bro it's a beautiful stadium but it's poorly managed in our mm-hmm. country when it comes to infrastructure we build something amazing maintenance yeah, is not there true maintenance is not there so this has to change so when you have like i i i'm going to mention this quite a number of times lah when you have people who are sports management say we they know how to manage all these kind of things oh and also i forgot to mention kl ah kl is making good steps so understand li bernard so mm. now they are they are marketing the team very well through astro and slowly they are bringing changes to the to the training centers and even the kl football stadium they have the backing already so basically how how they want things to be the council will actually help them because the council is just sponsoring the team so in that sense you know it, there is a good synergy between uh, both sides like uh, both both, uh, both, uh, both uh both the council and the club so when you have this kind of synergy some of things will move will improve but at the end of the day if you want to have a well built a well developed football club you need your own infrastructure lab because that's when you know you can see changes you can see improvements and all that but, but then, it makes uh, it a bit tough at the moment lab But then isn't it strange, you know, because football is a is a, is a, is a, is, a, is a basically a padang game or is it a stadium game? Right. And then when they're renting out from the state team, uh, isn't it their responsibility actually to manage the grass, the high? Like I remember one game with Manchester City. Mm. Uh, of course, it's a private club, but these are the basic sports uh, or basic requirement in football, right? So, isn't it strange that actually is happening there right now? It is. I mean. Uh... You mean the council is not doing up the pitch, even though these guys are paying the rent, is it? Yeah, but then why can't this basically this uh, the the team themselves manage this uh, this 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 infrastructure for matter? Bro, a lot of bureaucracy, bro. You have to get permission. Mm-hmm. So these clubs they want to cut that. Mm-hmm. So when you have to go through all that, they surely somehow give up and they just say, you know what? We'll just play on this pitch. So mm-hmm. to make themselves comfortable with the pitch that they have. their training center they have to do the same exact pitch just to make sure that the players are well adjusted mm-hmm. like i give you an example uh, slango uh, the training center that they have built right now coach satya actually said i want the same feel as shalam then they said why then he told them how am i if we if we play in a good pitch here and then we're going to go there and get injured i don't want that to happen to my players Mm-hmm. So you are, you understand these are the kind of issues that coaches and players go through you know and uh, a lot of like I know coaches are vocal about it but at the end of the day is any action being done no because councils at the, at the end of the day for them is just like you bagi saya rent I bagi you stadium to jala that's how they think that's how they think so I think clubs are trying their best to make these councils understand look if you want our football to improve we need your cooperation and all that but that on that front i think is a bit uh, how to say it's tough at the moment lah because these councils wouldn't want to budge they are like you know they are comfortable with what they are doing at the moment it's yeah, a relation yeah. mentality lah bro like tapala yeah. tapala you boleh main asal kau boleh main you can see now it, it, it needs a top down approach lah and the top floor needs to be like you know a real football football uh, person yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes i think we also can see this kind of thing in the community padang as well also lah <laughs> <laughs> yes yes okay i'm glad match 5 onwards they'll be able to play i they have been fighting for it for a long time but i'm happy now they're able to play again mhm okay mm-hmm. okay all right all right So far, it's been a really hot discussion, but you know we'll be right back because it's just going to get even hotter after this. So stay tuned, guys. Okay, we are right back now with another segment of the Bola Bola Show podcast, and this one is going to get. we're going to dive even deeper and more serious because unfortunately sadly you know 
racism in Malaysian football is real. It's happening. It's not a myth because our guest today has written an extensive article on that subject. And of course, we need to congratulate you, Avinish, on the nomination for your running for an award, right? For this particular article that you written some years back. Mm, yeah, AIPS. Yes. Mm. Thank you. But I, I just want to know, I mean, mm. having spoken and talked and wrote about this so many times, you know, how serious is this issue actually? For me, it is serious. That's serious. That's all I can say. It's serious. Because we have uh, players who still utter the words hitam. We still have players who say kita kalau ambil budak negro tu baik lah. You know, it's very casual. But they don't understand the severity behind it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, I was told that in when play, KL played against Lango, uh, allegedly the fans who are outside of the stadium, they did monkey chants and so on. So, mm-hmm. it is quite sad to actually see this still happening, you know. We live in a multiracial society. We always strive on, you know, saying that we are united, we will not be divided. Yet, you know, we still have people calling this, like, you know, Indians calling some Malay fella Nata, Chinese fella, these fella, Tina Babi and all that. And then we have some people calling Indians calling. Mm-hmm. It's still happening, you know. It's happening within the society and also within the sport itself. And, uh, you know, we have been trying to... I mean, it's quite sad that the issue was only brought out two years ago by us when it should have, it, when it should have been done a long time ago. You know, so for me, at the end of the day, education needs to be better. We can do as many campaigns as we want, but if we do not educate the kids or even the adults about, you know, the severity of racism or calling someone, you know, racistless and all that, it will never change. You know, I will share. So I will share one incident. This was, I think, three years ago. When Pera played Slango, I was sitting at the stand and I was watching the game. You know, I just wanted to watch a good game of football, but it was mm-hmm. ruined by one moment. Mm-hmm. There was this one girl. Mm-hmm. I do not know. It was a player. La. She was only six or seven years old. Mm-hmm. She started shouting, "Oi, hitam, chopat lari, apa ang buat?" I looked mm-hmm. at her. You know, and the father was laughing. The father was laughing. And I looked at her and she continued saying, you know, hitamoro, hitamoro and all that, no. So, and then for, at one moment, suddenly she said, Kalim, to one of the Indian players there on the pitch. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know whether the player heard it or not, but I heard it clearly. <laughs> I looked at the father, I was like, Pachi, control mule dies. Pachi, jangan cakap macam tu, tak baik. He said, tak apa, budak, dia tak tahu apa-apa pun. I said, kalau dia tak tahu apa-apa pun, cakap kat dia, yang ni tak betul. That's all like that. Mm-hmm. You know, but they just take it very casually. They're like, you know, why are you taking it seriously? But for me, that is serious. Mm-hmm. Because when they grow up, they'll look at us differently. They'll look at us like, you know, what is this? What is that? We don't want that to happen, you know. And it shouldn't happen in football. It shouldn't be happening in football. Football is meant to divide. Yes, it, during matches, it can be heated. Place will say all this uh, profanities and so on. But to call someone, you know, black, negro, monkey, I think that has to stop. Mm-hmm. That has to stop. That is so childish. And I've told uh, the African players and also even our local players, bro, you wouldn't believe even Akram Mayanan is being called Hitam, you know. Mm-hmm. It's sad. It's sad. He's being called Hitam. But when I told him about it, he said, bro, I da cakap tak betul. Tapi, you know, they keep on saying it. I cannot do anything about it. You know, they, they have gone to, they have resigned to the fact that, no, okay, it's okay, they can call me hitam, that kind of thing. And I told this, I told African players or local players, you know, if you hear anything wrong, just go and report to FAM. Because right now, FAM is serious in combating it. But they need written statements, they need recorded statements. So if players don't come forward and complain about it, nothing is going to happen. You know, but in the stands, if you hear something and uh, if we report about it, FAM actually immediately calls the reporter and asks, what happened? Can we know? Can you give us the details? And they will try to take action. In that sense, I I have to salute FAM. And also yesterday, uh, the youth and sports minister spoke about it. I'm very happy. I'm actually glad that he's seeing this issue as something that is serious. And he said he wants to be part of it. So I'm looking forward to see what he's going to do to help with the uh, MFL's uh, Red Card to Racism campaign. 
So we'll see what happens next, lah. I mean, I'm I'm interested to see what's going to happen in the next few months in terms of you know combating racism in football in our country. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Because I was I was just about to ask you, you know, as the I mean, do you think the authorities are actually doing enough to address this problem? Okay, you mentioned that FAM. Okay, they are mm. they are stepping up their game. What about the local FAs? The I mean, the the FCs, the clubs, and uh, and of course, this this racism matter also. You know, it, mm. it starts at home as well, lah. Right. So it's correct, not, correct. Yeah. So, uh, clubs like sorry, you were you were saying something. I didn't. The authorities, the authorities. Ah. I mean, uh, clubs. Okay, for example, is it FAM are really doing? I mean, they are starting to step up the game. So, what about mm-hmm. the clubs and and you know other football related authorities? Yeah. Uh, clubs. I would say some of them are actually taking steps. Like Slamo mm-hmm. last season, they did it when uh, Satya actually went public by saying that his player was called this and that. Yeah. So, and also, and I was also happy that captain at the time Taylor Regan came up publicly saying, saying that you know if you call my brother's names, I'm going to stand in front and I'm going to confront you. So that kind of statement gives some kind of conviction. But at the end of the day, the fans also start ridiculing Taylor Regan and all that. So mm-hmm. you know this kind of thing. I mean, Slango is is stepping up on their game and uh, Trangano. Trangano surprisingly, they did a video on the team's unity and they got a Chinese supporter. And an Indian supporter to talk about the, about the club, and they say they are united. That itself is a good sign already that the club is changing. Tengano, ah, Tengano, because I know Kipre has received a lot of, uh, you know, racist comments from the fans there. Mm-hmm. So the club is stepping up to you know change that perception because this season they have two African players, Makan Konate and also Peter Shetembi. Mm-hmm. So I think it's good that they are starting it now itself to say you know what, we are supporting the team. Call do not call the players' names. If you want to criticize his performance, by all means do it. But do not criticize his color skin or anything. That is good. That is good. Yeah, that is a step. And uh, as for the other clubs, you know, at the moment I feel it's a lot of talk, action, not much yet. And I hope this year, uh, these clubs would be uh, strong in you know telling the fans stop using this, stop using that, don't use this, don't use that word, and all that. Uh, at the same time, I also feel that the officials, the referees, they need to be serious about this law. So if they hear a player, you know, telling another player a racist law, go and talk to the player and tell him off, and then put in a report and get the player fined. That is very, very important. Yeah, the 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 players. Mm. Yeah, in fact, the players should should. I mean, for for example, like you see what's happening in Europe and all. Uh, I mm-hmm. think uh, recently that uh, the PSG and uh, Istanbul game match. Yeah, remember, yeah. And and uh, the players just decided to just walk out of. The walk field. off. I mean, this is something. I think uh, you know, if, if things really get out of hand, you know, I, I'm That's not sure. It, yeah, it's. I'm glad you brought up that point. See, in Europe, mm-hmm. the players they have their stand. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't care. They don't care. Like, you know, okay, I'll yeah. just walk off. If I lose my money, I don't care. This is my mm-hmm. principle. In yeah. Malaysia, though, it is not like that. Players are still hesitant. Players are like, you know, if I do that means, am I going to get my starting mm-hmm. position? If I do that means, am I going to lose my salary? Am I going to be fine? You know, those kind of things are yeah. still lingering in their mind. So, players need to, how to say, uh, they need to step up in the sense that, you know, they have to, Fend for themselves. Do not be afraid of what the authorities are going to do. If you are strong in your principles, people will support you. When people support you, things will change. So mm-hmm. players must have this kind of mindset. And I always tell this to the players that I know, lah. Especially to the African players, I've told them, you know, bro, if someone calls you a monkey, a negro, or whatever, walk off the pitch, make a statement, make a statement. Mm-hmm. So some of these players they're still hesitant, but I have a feeling they will do it soon. Like if a Dio, if he gets any racist comments, I know he goes to the management side and also to the referee side. But he said so far he has not received such comments yet, which I'm very happy for him lah. He's good. Mm-hmm. It's good that he's not getting those comments, you know. But I, I like other players. You know, more, Sumari spoke to me and told me that he cannot before. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you know this player, Nudumba Makache. He played for Penang and also for Felda United in the past. Mm-hmm. He was called names. He was called names by the management. He was called names by the fans. He was called names by the players. And he said the stories to me. So I was actually happy that these players came out because when we wrote the special report two years ago, my worry was these players would say, "Can I go off record?" You know. Mm-hmm. 
But when I ask Nudumba and when I ask Sumari, you know, they told me, bro, go on record. I will talk. I told Akram, you know, pergi on record. Tak boleh, bro. Tak ada masalah. Kita nak stop isu ni. Yeah. Fatih pun also told me the same thing. So long ago, bro. He, he told me, sorry mm. for speaking Tamil. My yeah, bad. No, 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 no problem. <laughs> I mean, yeah. uh, he told he told me, yeah. uh, bro, in Tengano, when I was first, when I first came in as a substitute, I struggled a little. People call me Kaling. Players call me Kaling. He shared those stories to me. But eventually, he said, I changed that mindset through my performances and they accepted me for who I am. But this should not be happening again, lah, he told. You know, so players came forward and, you know, they shared their stories. I was very happy. Then I told the players that are going through this kind of problem, just come out, don't care, don't be afraid of what the management is going to say. You know, mm-hmm. if you are if you're, if you're serious about combating racism, you have to come out. You have to come out. No other choice. But even uh, Europe mm. took a very long time to be where they are right now, if I may say. So, mm. I do think Malaysia actually is a, it's more like a generational thing and a cultural thing which might even cost longer time period. Could be. Yes, could be. Could be. But uh, I would say this right now, uh, based on what I'm seeing at the moment, the developments that I'm seeing, based on what the players have said, I think... You know, it will change. You know, players will not call players. Uh, I mean, will not use racial slurs against other players. That will stop because stories are going public. Now is the fans. It's the fans now that we have to look at. So how do we do that? Campaigns, yes, good. But it needs further enhancement. You know, it's pointless to have a banner to just say, you know, stop racism and all that. You need teams to go and educate the youngsters. You need teams to go and educate the fans. When they have fan meetings, the management has to tell this to this. I mean, to the fan associations or even the ultras. So I know all, but in that sense, ultras is very good. They do not do this kind of uh, monkey slurs and all that. Yes, they try to provoke teams, but they never go racial. That is something that I always salute them for, lah, for what they are doing the ultras. But the ultras also now, for me, if they can, I hope they. They pick up this call. They can go and tell their mates about, you know, the seriousness of racism. You know, let's support teams for the beauty of the game. Let's not, you know, go and deride players, say that, call them names and all that. No, you know, that has to stop. You know, do not call a player monkey. Do not call a player negro. Do not call a player killing. Do not call a player tina babi. Do not call a player, you know, uh, Malayu malas or nata or something like that. All that has to stop. All that has to stop. So. I think right now it's within the fans and also clubs educating the fans. That is very, very essential right now. FAM, you have to understand, yeah, FAM and MFL, they are the, the governing body. They cannot be doing everything. So the clubs and also the fan clubs and also those from the Altas groups and us reporters as well, we, we are duty-bound to educate people on the seriousness of these issues. That is why I wrote that commentary. Because, you know, it was serious. I, I've been impacted by it. I've heard players, so many players talking about it. So, you know, for me, I thought through my writing, I need to, you know, make a stand on, on racism. And until today, if people talk to me about it. I'm kind of passionate about it. Like, you know, I tell people it has to stop. Like, you know, it shouldn't be going on. We live in a multiracial society. We live in Malaysia, for God's sake. You know, our forefathers fought so hard to unite our nation and yet we are divided by calling people names and all that. I think that should stop. You know, and I even tell people, I would rather call myself a Malaysian. I would rather not call myself an Indian when I go out. You know, those kind of things. So, I, for me, it's all about education and also comes within you and also how teams and fans can go and talk to these clubs and all that. Like, that is very essential. Mm, okay, I can see how much passion you are about the subject, bro. And of course, <laughs> we, we we wish you all the best in terms of the article getting the award. And yeah, yes. thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. <laughs> so now we're we're gonna end. Uh, of course, you know when it comes to this topic, you know we can talk forever. But yes, cool. now we're gonna move on to the next subject after this segment, which is the okay. 2021 season. <laughs> Okay, guys, and welcome back. So uh, now we move into the 2021 season. So, uh, Avinash, uh, mm. which team do you feel has done the best in terms of overall recruitment for 
for this coming season? Uh, Tengano has done well hmm. because uh, Dafuzi has got the plays that he won and he's got the plays that he coached in the Klantan President Cup. The one that I'm uh, most looking forward to is Nick Akif, how he performs in the Super League. He is a brilliant playmaker. A brilliant playmaker who can change games if you give him the chance. So I believe Nafuzi will give him the chance and uh, I hope the boy takes up that uh, that that pressure and perform. Lah. You know, that's one. In terms of recruitment, who else? Uh, in terms of recruitment, I'm looking forward to Sabah also. I think they have signed interesting foreign players. Uh, they have signed Levi Madinda, who is a Gabonese international, well versed in the, in in I mean he's 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 a prominent Euro- player in Europe. He has played for Celta Vigo and so on. Christo Milevski has played in the Europa League, and then Sam Johnson is Liberia's captain. So for them to be able to pull off such a signing is a huge deal. And Sadil Sadil is back, so I'm looking forward to watching the old Sadil again. Because uh, when he was in Indonesia, he's been uh, the sort. I mean, he has been, uh, you know, uh, in the news for the wrong reasons. But now he's coming to Sabah with uh, with the with a new mindset, and I hope you know he helps his uh, former under twenty three coach Kurniawan in Sabah. So in that sense, I'm actually quite uh, interested to see how Sabah performs lah with with these four foreigners that we have signed. Who else? Uh, okay, JDT, as we all know, they have signed Daniel Ame, who to me is also a top, top player. And I hope, uh, you know, he gels into the team quickly and starts often because if if he starts often, he will be one of our key midfielders in the national team. Mark my words. Because Daniel Ame is that good. He's, he's also intelligent with the way he plays the game and all that. So, they've got Daniel Ame and uh, I hope Mamadou Samari will uh, silence the critics because, you know, lots lots have happened in whatever that he's done, you know. And uh, so, I hope he can prove the doctors wrong and perform for JDT. Uh, who else? What else? Which team? Uh, Slango, it would be interesting to see how the... Uh, uh, how Kasten actually gels his team, how he gets his team going with his tactics. So, in that sense, they've recruited who they wanted. So, I hope they can achieve a good result this season. Uh, yeah, these are the teams that have actually piqued my interest in terms of recruitment. Mm, okay, from uh, over recruitment to player. So, which player yeah. are you looking forward to have a standout year in the coming season? Local or far Maybe you give you one from each other. Okay. Uh, local, I would say Nikakif. Nikakif. Because uh, if he gets into his groove, he will be the focal point for Tangano. And uh, players like Makan and Petrus will have the freedom to attack as much as they want. If Nick Akiv gets his deep line duties very well, so I think he's 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 a player that we should watch out. And then foreign, foreign. I was actually looking forward to Jonathan Herrera, but it's not happening. Um, who I would say should we look after? I would say uh, the Tanganos foreign uh, signings have also been quite interesting, especially the front three factors, Makan and David. Mm-hmm. They are both three of them are quite good. Uh, Halama, let me think. Uh, foreign is a lot. Kurda. I mean, I think the cycle is the Kurd, right? Uh, Kurda, they have kept the, the, the players that they wanted, like the foreign players. So the same unit is still there. Oh, I forgot to mention about Kada. They are this year they have gone, their recruitment has gone a little. I mean, they have been a bit pragmatic in their approach. But I do hope they will succeed in the AFC Cup and also Super League Club because Ideal Sharin to me is uh, is one of the best coaches in the region with the way he, you know, uh, functions with his team and so on. So it'll be interesting to see how he does this season. Because last season, you know, it was a truncated season because of the COVID. So we to say, I'm okay with. I I didn't answer your question yet. The foreigner, um, I would say Levi Madinda for Sabah. It would be interesting to see how he performs because he is signed to replace Petrus because Petrus was Sabah's main player last season. 
in terms of set pieces passes and all that so levi madinda is uh, i i'm sure you all are aware that he's a he's a kabonis international he's played 50 caps and his duty is to basically spray passes for obameyang la so it'll be interesting to see how he does that for saba uh, and he this time around he'll be doing it for sam johnson and also plays like sadil and all that la so i think my pick would be levi madinda la Okay, and uh, of course, you know, PJ City has decided mm. to make a bold decision by going for a full local squad. Mm. Okay, w- what is your view on this decision and how far do you think they can go in the coming season? I think it's a bold decision, a decision that uh, the club owners are quite optimistic about, even though I'm a bit pessimistic about it. Mm-hmm. Because the players that they've recruited, they are good players, no doubts about it. But they're not at the level of the GDT, Stranganos and Slangos. Mm-hmm. you know so right now i think coach maniam is trying to instill a lot of hard work in them and he also wants to bring element of surprise in their game so we might see players like darren lock you know he's got lots to prove at the moment because people think that he's not a potent striker so he will want to show that he is meant for the national team and then uh, sunil chandran is one player that i'm really interested to watch because he played in england for 3 years he played for his university longwear university and uh, what's interesting about him is uh, before he went to england he was actually a skinny kid he wasn't really uh, he was quite small in size he played for pkns he was nimble but he went to england he stepped up in terms of fitness and strength and if you look at him you know the his body structure and everything it looks really good like a top notch football player so if, if given games to him i hope he performs and he improves and gets better so if if maniam is able to bring out the best in this kind of place i think they will have a good season uh, they are targeting a top 5 finish but i would say they would finish 8 uh, or 9th in the league by relegation i don't think it's a possibility la but if they ever reach to that stage Mark my words, they might sign one or two foreign players now in the second transfer window. Mm, okay, interesting. Nice. Yeah, and uh, and Aminish, what about your mm. favorite club, Perak? You know, under Chong Yifat, you know, who came in at the last moment to replace Mehmet Durakovic. So, you know, how mm. confident are you in uh, your state team? Confident. Very good question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you seem to mention about the, all most of the other states, but I didn't hear anything about Perak, bro. Okay, uh, as a fan, I wish yeah. this team will actually succeed. I know Coach Ifat personally is a nice man, and uh, he always mm-hmm. instills this fighting spirit uh, in his teams. Mm-hmm. His coaching uh, method is almost similar to uh, Mehmet. You know, Mehmet wants his players to work hard. His tactics may not be brilliant, but the players work for him. So now I think Ifat wants to have that happening in his coaching. So we, I would not expect them to go guns blazing. Yes, the last friendly they beat Penang two one, but they only played one friendly yeah this year, and they only played few sparring games against Para two. So their preparations has been a bit uh, stunted, I would say. But thank God they they were able to keep the core players in the team. So right now, Yifa needs to get these core players to perform for the team because last time around these core players they played for Mehmet. They were willing to die for Mehmet to that extent. Mm-hmm. So that is something that Yifa has to work on. But I wouldn't say I'm. It wouldn't be easy. But uh, I don't know chances for us to be. in the top half of the table could be tough actually i would say if we get 6 or 7 or so i would be happy honestly with the way that we have prepared but but i am always a believer of you know teams proving me wrong i hope pera is able to do that you know when i say they're going to finish 6 or 7 the players or the coaches they would take the challenge and say you know what let's prove this fellow wrong you know he's got his assignment <laughs> assessment wrong the same thing with any other team like for example UITM I wouldn't forget this yeah I actually said they would they they will fight they will be in the relegation battle but they will escape it so one of the players who signed for them Victor Niranol uh he saw an STS article and he said we will get relegated and he showed me that article and then I also told him I have a feeling you guys might struggle because you have students as your players they finished 6 last season and he immediately texted me Look where we are right now, bro. 
And uh, this season, I said the three teams that will perform was uh, I oh, I said JDT, Trangano, and Kedala. I said these three teams will perform. He immediately texted me and said, "Bro, why you never put UITM there?" <laughs> so I said, <laughs> "I said, bro, good, prove me wrong. You know, if you get it right, I mean, if you guys finish top half, even top four, top five, I'll buy you dinner." He said, "No problem." do that you know so it's good that you know players are taking up this challenge you know instead of seeing it as a way of uh, you know why these fellows are saying this about me they take it as a motivating factor which i hope our local players would do it would see it in that manner so like instead of saying you know kada chaka macho to and all that mm-hmm. so it's is that that mentality la has to change you know in europe also is like that when you tell this player you know for example someone tells pepe oh, you you know what a triple only and all that then suddenly he performs against leicester So it's the motivation that needs to keep these players going lah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, it's it's nice to see that dynamic between uh, journalists, media, players, and all that. You know that 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 interaction between you guys and yeah. proving proving uh, doubters wrong. It's nice to see that actually. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Lastly, your pick on mm. which team to finish in top three of the Malaysia Super League and two teams to get relegated to the Premier League this season. Any chance, Ladang? Got the. Alama. <laughs> you are asking quite early, actually. Okay, top three, ah. Uh. Okay, lah. Like JDT, I think will get their eighth straight title. I have a feeling, lah, like, with the way that they have prepared and because they have everything, lah. Like, they have everything, so they are the favorites to win it, lah. Like, you know, and uh, the other two teams, I would say, uh, Tengano, Tengano could be in the mix. Keda. Kedah also could be in the mix. Uh, the dark horses, I would say, uh, who I would say, UITM, UITM. Actually, you know what? Just now you asked me about a foreign player that I'm most looking forward to. It's UITM striker Nana Poku, Nana Poku, because he played in the Egyptian league for two top clubs. I mean, you know, he played for Zamalek, and he was quite popular there. So when he, when UITM actually signed him, I I asked his agent how the hell you brought him here, you know because he's got a very good CV and he was playing in Qatar also, you know top top league top division. So for them to bring a player of that stature uh, is a good thing lah. So right now I think Poku if he gets his uh, ammunition, I think UITM will do well in the league. If he keeps on scoring, they will do well. And Bernard you are, is a good. You are saying good. top three, yeah. Uh, Uh, no, top three, I would say Kedah, Tengano and Johor. Okay, right. Dark Horses, UITM. Uh-huh. Uh, UITM and... Uh, what's the other team? Perala. Dark Horses. <laughs> As for relegation... Oh, yo. You better Honestly, stand, bro, by, stand by for the players to flood your text, lah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, to be honest with you... Yeah. I cannot predict a relegation battle because I think the oh. top uh, top ones will be JDT, but the rest of the the other eleven teams it's going to be an open battle. It could I be anyone. Like, it could be anyone. Yes, it could be anyone. Mm-hmm. It could oh, be that, anyone. That's how competitive. Yeah, everybody how, else is except okay, JDT yeah. is in a gulf on their own class. So okay, yeah, okay. yeah, they are they are different class at the moment lah. But the yeah. other teams it's 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 open. <laughs> But if a team goes through any gaji problem, ah, you will know what's going to happen next, lah. <laughs> okay, uh, Elvin, 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 uh, Bala, you know you guys are Slango fans, so you heard it first, lah. Huh? Anything can <laughs> happen, lah. <huh? laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you you like put everybody into the mixer, man. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Well, yeah. any any last question, guys? Uh, I mean, uh, interesting. Okay, uh, Avinash, you really hyped up a lot about Trangano, so we really look forward mm. to Trangano. Just, just to you know, share with you also. You know, we have been. Uh, I mean, we have interviewed uh, Trangano's Kerte uh, FC and all these. You know, and their ah. new development programs and all this has, has been mm. awesome. So I think the state is like like what you say. You know, the 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 state is really focusing a lot on youth development and mm. uh, you know, feeder clubs and all that. So it's a you know fantastic. Uh, Thing that's going on in that state, so I, I, you know, just concur to what you say about Trangano as well. Mm. So we look, we look forward to that. Uh, another thing, just now, Avinash, you know, just I don't know whether you remember this guy, but uh, you know, when mm. you mentioned the Korean centre back for Perak, I, re- mm. I only think of Jang Jung back in the nineties. Obviously, bro, he's a legend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just he's a legend, and he also coached us. He also coached us actually. 
yeah for a while yeah, yeah but so uh, yeah, Zan- shout out la shout out yeah, zanjung was yeah. a brilliant player and at the time you know he plays like on nine really no brilliant players and i wasn't and at the, at the time i was still a young kid but because people told me about their prowess i was like wow these guys are good you know and all that and even my family members said you know these fellows are special like, even though these my family members are not uh, fervent football followers so that's the kind of impact these guys make <laughs> in the yeah, state yeah. la Yeah. So uh, anyway, I just want to thank you, la man. Thank you for coming on board and sharing all your, you know, insights. No problem. Us. No problem. Yeah. I hope I was uh, honest and I give uh, give what so you guys wanted. You were, you were, you were very honest. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely honest, bro. But uh, it's, it's a good thing you escape on the two relegation part, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Because, bro, the the fact of the matter is, it's going to be open and it's anybody's game. Mm-hmm. You know, it's going to be tough. It's really going to be tough. To, even right now, if you tell me who's going to be champion, yeah, because JDT has got everything. I'm saying, I'm telling their favorites, lah. But the rest, it's going to be an open battle. Mm-hmm. It's hard for me to assess it because the league has not started. I always tell people, if you want to ask my prediction, after five to ten games, you ask me, okay, I can tell you who the who is going to get relegated, who is going to perform, and all that. Mm-hmm. You know those kind of things. So right now, it's a bit too early. But you know, I am basing it. Uh, I'm basing things on the recruitment of the teams and so on, lah. So like UATM, they still use their students, but they have signed quite good foreign players. They also got a foreign goalkeeper. And then uh, Kuala Lumpur, Kuala Lumpur. Interestingly, they have also got quite a quite stellar foreign names and also experienced players in the setup. You know what? I think they they should be they should be in the dark horses category also. They can because they've also got a good coach and the boy. Oh mm-hmm. so, yeah. Even the boyan told me that they want to stay in the league first, but I have a feeling they will perform, lah. They will perform. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm. Interesting. How about you, Bala? Any last question? Ah uh, yes. Uh, thank you, Avinash. Uh, I think I give very uh, great review about the about the pre uh, MLF leagues, the kickoff. Thank you. Uh, so thank thanks you. for your time, and uh, we really appreciate for your for your support. And then uh, just uh, lastly, uh, do you really? Do you do you think this uh, out of eleven teams? Do you think if anyone have any chance of dethroning JDT from the A title? Do you, I mean basically? Do you think JDT is going to prove your prove prove doubt prove you wrong? Prove me wrong in what? Not winning the league? Huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> Because you see, if you look at their team, it's perfect. They have they have the top national players there. So if they were to lose the title, uh, I'm sorry, TMG has got lots lots of questions to ask because mm-hmm. they have everything. They've got the infrastructure. They've got a beautiful stadium. The players there are happy. You know, they're paid on time. You know, they're treated very well. And you know, most of the the bulk of the national players come from there. So no doubts, they are the favorites. They are heavy favorites, actually. Yeah, yeah. So for other teams to actually, you know, shorten the gap, it's going to take time. So, like Tangano's project, I'm really interested because they have got youngsters. So they need to inculcate that winning habit in them instead of just saying, "Allah riziki dapat main itu dah cukup." No, saya nak masuk untuk menang. That kind of mentality has to be instilled in all the players because mm-hmm. I know the foreign players they have that mindset in Tangano. If actually no, in all the teams, the foreign players have that mindset, the winning mindset. They want to win team. So it's our local players that need to step up. So you see, like the likes of Shuko Ada and Indra Putra. Their mindset is totally different. You know, we want these players to come up to that level, but they must come. Uh, they, it must happen earlier, mm-hmm. at a very young age. So yeah, it will be interesting to see how these teams perform, lah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Any yeah. last word from yourself, Avinish? Guys, what you're doing is brilliant, and awesome. I thank you all for giving me the opportunity oh. to actually say a few words on Malaysian football, and I hope you guys continue doing this for a long time. Mm-hmm. Keep the passion going, lah. Keep the passion going. That's what we need. Uh, right now in Malaysian football, and I wish you guys all the best, lah. And I hope to be invited again in the future. Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, uh, and uh, I would, I hope at that time I can, you know, share more stuff and be able to be more frank with you all on things, lah. I mean, sure, to this sure. session, so I was, I was be, I was trying to be as honest as possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I would like to thank you all for giving me that opportunity, lah. Thanks so much. Okay, no problem, no problem. In fact, uh, we will be glad to have you back on, on the Bola Bola Show. Okay, everyone. With that said, uh, we will end this week's episode of the Bola Bola Show. Thank you and goodbye. Bye.